Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to a brand new year, a brand new series and a brand new episode of your favourite four-wheel drive TV. We've got all the overflow action from the Taupo 1000 from New Zealand this episode, so no delay, let's get stuck straight into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Just prior to Christmas, our team was out in the Pyrenees Ranges in central western Victoria. We were halfway through a two day camping, four wheel driving and filming trip for your 4x4 when we came across this interesting hill climb that was begging for a play. Well what a day it's been, raining right through the morning, raining across our lunch break. We've now come across the range back into sunshine, it's awesome and look what we've found. An absolute monster of a hill climb up behind me. Ruts, rocks, slippery and wet. I reckon this will be a fantastic challenge. Let's give it a crack. First up to tackle the climb was Michael Johnson, the son of industry icon, Alan Johnson from Piranha Off-Road. Michael's 80 was running 35 inch Mickey Thompson TTC claws and along with his front and rear ARB air lockers and race suspension, he definitely had the best setup vehicle and the most capable of tackling this type of hill. Michael's lumbering 80 hardly skipped a beat on this climb, making it look easy enough for others to have a confident crack. So next up was Dad, Alan Johnson, in one of his superbly prepared Suzuki's. In this case, an agile Vitara. Being super lightweight and running low pressure Federal Caraggia tyres, Alan made a mill of the track until he needed his rear ARB air locker. From there it was smooth sailing with a clear increase in cross differential traction engaged at the flick of a switch. Next on the hill was Sam Bowden in the ARB Hilux. Sam also travelled with us to Tasmania in early 2013 and with both ARB air lockers engaged he almost had a flawless run. It's clear to see here what a difference a spotter can make outside the vehicle. Well, that'll do. That little touch of guidance and a point in the right direction can make a big difference, as it did here. Miranda, as always, was keen to take on the climb and with a steady pace aimed our Colorado 7 skywards. A relative newcomer to the scene, this mid-sized 4x4 wagon has been proving its worth on the tracks and with both ARB air lockers engaged was making excellent progress. The 5-link coil rear end works a treat out here but at the same point where both the Hilux and Vitara lost traction, the Colorado 7 was also slightly detained. A new line, a solid right foot 
and low pressure Mickey Thompson MTZs got Miranda back on track and heading easily for the top. Last to tackle the hill was Cameron Brown in the Brown Davis Ute, sporting MTZ muddies but only a factory rear locker. We were all keen to see just how far he could get, keeping in mind that four rigs had already been up before him. But it wasn't long before traction was lost and Cameron came to a slippery stop on the steep track. We dropped Cam's tyre pressure from 18 psi to 14 and looked at new lines, but to no avail, so his mean mother winch was called into action. The quality winch and experienced users will make light work of these situations. And it wasn't long before the winching was done and we were all on our way. A successful recovery, done safely too. An awesome hill climb and a fantastic effort by at least half of our crew. A couple of us winching, a few stop and starts there, but we got four of those vehicles up, not a problem. And I have to say, very impressed with the Colorado 7. It's doing well out here on some of the tougher trails. Love it. Hi, I'm Brian from 360 Gearbox. Today I want to show you a general tour of our workshop. This is our receptionist area, and this is where we've got a good collection of broken gearbox parts. This is our workshop, and generally we'll have 50 gearboxes in here. A quality gearbox rebuild will take approximately six hours. This is our fitment bay. During the week, it's full of full drives. A quality workshop will have a stack of second-hand parts. A good workshop will have a stack of changeover gear. All gearbox rebuilders should have quality kits in stock. Rebuilding gearboxes is dirty work. But they should end up as clean as this one. I'm Brian from 360 Gearboxes. Hope you've enjoyed the tour of our shop. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three ton towing and the awesome 470 Newton meter Duramax diesel engine. Plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control. All for the hardcore adventurer. The all new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off road at your Holden dealer today. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. Total recovery and extraction device, TREAD. Whether it's sand, mud, snow, rocks, or any tough terrain, TREAD is the ultimate all-in-one recovery device. Designed and manufactured in Australia for rugged performance, TREAD will let you explore with confidence. Available in a variety of colors and two easy to use sizes, TREAD is the true Aussie traction board you've been waiting for. For more information, visit meanmother.com.au.
One of New Zealand's biggest and best off-road race trucks, affectionately known as Big Black and owned by local four-wheel drive identity Rana Haran, this vehicle was again at the Taupo 1000 ready to take on the challenge. Adorned with striking mouldy motifs, Rana's off-road racer provides a muscular stance and aggressive race posture on the track. Power comes from a VK56 5.6 litre Nissan V8 motor fitted out with a supercharger for forced induction. Rana cut his teeth in the local winch challenge scene and progressed to off-road racing a few years ago. He has now raced in two Taupo 1000s and last year won his class whilst competing in Australia. For the 2013 Taupo 1000, Rana's plans were to keep things simple. Oh, today it'll just be get out there, grind out the Ks today, just stay out of trouble and get to day two really. Day two's the race day. But there were plenty of changes to test out. We've changed a lot of things on the truck. We've put bigger wheels, bigger brakes, refreshed the engine, and most of it's as it's been running after that. Unfortunately, Rana's run for a podium finish was cut short, but his big black motorsports truck is still one of NZ's leading off-road racers. Viewers, here we are out and about with my Colorado Ute. Now with the build up of this vehicle, we've only gone for high quality accessories. Specifically up the front here, we're running a mean mother four wheel drive edge series winch and an ARB bull bar. So why is it critical that you team high quality products with each other? Well, there are a stack of stories out and about at the moment, guys. Of course, there are low spec, very inexpensive or cheap winches because they are cheap that are failing. But more importantly, we're seeing a lot of cases where copied bull bars are coming in from overseas People are going back to four-wheel drive shops after having a good winch fitted and their winch isn't working when they're out in the field. They'll have a look in the car park at the shop, run the winch in and out, it works fine. But get it out in the bush again and it stops working. What is the issue? The issue is basically, and hang on to your seats for this one, that these cheap copy bull bars under load when winching are flexing and moving so much that the winch is seized and brought to a stop. What a disgusting situation to be in. What an absolutely ridiculous product that these people are bolting to the front of their cars. When it comes to four wheel drive accessories, go for high quality products, the best you can afford and save up for them if you need to, but pay once and get the best you can. Liam, a lot of the guys we've met through the winch challenge scene have been here this weekend. Yeah, and it's been really, really good. We've actually caught up with a whole lot of old mates that we haven't seen for ages. Good to see everybody still doing it. Some form of motorsport anyway. Now, compared to the winch challenge, why do you love the off-road racing? A lot of seat time. Huge amount of seat time. Repairs aren't normally so bad, as we're not having to replace diffs, gearboxes so much, other than for me this weekend. But just a lot of seat time, and hey, look at the weather we got for this one. It's normally wet and rough. Well, the changeover from Winch Challenge to these events seems quite easy. What changes do you make to the truck? Not too much. Probably the main change that we would make would be limiting the travel. Trying not to get too much travel in the truck. Like, I think I'm only running maybe about 8 inches of travel, whereas we're normally running to 12 to 14, just to try and give it some stability. We get a few kicks on the backside, but we can handle it. Also lightening the vehicle up. Yeah, we do line it up, but we're better off to be stronger. So with strength, fortunately, you need weight. So that's normally what we work on, and then we'll see probably the end of the day. Most of these guys, probably the largest finishing class will be class six. Most of the guys take the winches off as well. Yeah, they do. This is the first one that I've raced without my winch, mainly because I just ran out of time. I've been ending up setting up everybody else's vehicles and just didn't get time to put my winch back on. So I actually felt a bit naked without it. What about a change in driving style? 
not too different for us. Like we've always been put in it and let's see what tree we bounce off. So that hasn't changed too much for us. But with the 1000, you do have to back off. Otherwise you end up on your roof like I did. <laughs> What would you say to four wheel drivers out there to inspire them to get into off-road racing? For me, it's definitely been the most affordable form of motorsport. You can go out, get a Pajero, Nissan Safari or Patrol, whack a cage in it and go. The gear's tough, it's strong, it's cheap. And hey, the family can still see it and enjoy it too. Great to see you out there, Clem. Thank you very much. Thank you, thanks for your time. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. Do you need more from your four-wheel drive suspension? Designed for Aussie conditions, Superior Engineering has a suspension solution to suit any four-wheel drive. Mix and match from the widest range of specialty suspension components or opt for the latest in spring and dampening technologies. Throw in the widest range of 4x4 suspension accessories and Superior Engineering is your complete 4x4 and suspension specialist. Superior Engineering, it's engineered to be superior. For more information, visit superiorengineering.com.au. Warning, water in fuel is one of the biggest killers of diesel engines, but there is now a unique alarm system available that lets you know when there are dangerous water levels in your fuel system. Water Watch is a simple and effective fuel alarm that offers LED and audible warning signals. Easily fitted, Water Watch is inexpensive insurance for your vehicle. Avoid huge repair costs, ensure your motor runs clean, and be warned of any water issues with the innovative Water Watch. For more information, visit waterinddiesel.com.au. G'day, my name's Ian. My name's Zach. And this is our 2010 Nissan Patrol. We've got a brand new in 2010, and since then, over the last three years, we've added ARP bull bar, the HRD driving lights, a snorkel, two inch old man emu lift, the Mickey Thompson MTZs, the roof rack, awning, home built drawers in the rear. And what else we've got in there, Zach? Um, Dual batteries. 11 power sockets. Oh yeah, 11 power sockets to recharge all the uh, little kids' electronics. And we've just also recently just done a, a three inch exhaust. Makes her breathe a bit better and she goes pretty good now. We want to do some rock sliders, brush bars, a new intercooler, front and rear diff locks. We like to get over to the high country quite a bit. We head up to the Thompson Dam, up around uh, Dargo, La Cola, Hayfield, that sort of area. We get away sort of four or five times a year. Sometimes let the girls come along too. Next trip is next weekend. We're heading up to up around the Thompson Dam to a place called Merrington's. A few of the boys and their kids are going to get away. A bit of a boys trip. Should be a bit of fun. To enter the Your Rig competition, simply send an email to me, Simon at 4Drive TV. And each weekly winner takes home an electric blue Spanset recovery strap, a diesel fuel conditioner and additive from Responsive Engineering, an upper cylinder lubricant, stubby holder, and hyper lubricant from Motorcoat, a copy of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a copy of Dirt Comp magazine, and two copies of Blitz magazine. A solar pod buddy, thanks to our friends at Roller Solar. A $100 gift voucher from Ozpig. A stubby holder from Allsat Phones. An AnySharp knife sharpener from Kiesler. A hat and stubby holder, thanks to our friends at Superior Engineering. A HEMA Great Desert Tracks Atlas. A Donaldson Diesel Fuel Filtration Kit. A 360 gearbox emergency oil pack. A bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. A ration of Sanitarium Up and Go, a Carry Boy hat, a stubby of Bundaberg Ginger Beer, a U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit, an emergency ration of Ocean Delight Tuna, a comprehensive recovery kit courtesy of General Motors Holden, a prize pack from ARB including a drink bottle, travel mug, stubby holder and 4B key ring, 
and it's all securely wrapped up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. Big thanks to Simon and the crew for bringing us out here today. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for all the prizes. Thanks to 4WheelDrive TV and some fantastic sponsors, we've now got the announcements of the series prizes for 4WheelDrive TV and 4WheelDrive Pro Tips. Up first, Martin Twine from Menai in New South Wales will be taking home a 12-month subscription to Dirt Comp magazine. Next up, Simon Herman from Salisbury Downs in South Australia has won the Spanset Outback Recovery Kit. The Nava Ultima 225 Halogen Driving Lights have been won by Andrew Heatherton from Gladstone in Queensland. The huge ARB $500 gift voucher goes to Adele Garley from Penrith in New South Wales. And the complete Ozpig cooking and heating bush camping kit has been won by Bronwyn Polkinghorne from Karamolka, South Australia. Glenn Campbell from Willoughby in Western Australia has won the Travel Buddy 12 volt travel oven for hot food on the go. And the final prize for this series and this year is the Roller Solar Solar Power Kit courtesy of Roller Solar. And the lucky winner is Maria Carr from Menzies Creek in Victoria. Congratulations to all of the winners. Thank you to the generous sponsors who supplied all of these fantastic prizes. Thank you to you, the viewers, for supporting 4 Drive TV, 4 Drive Pro Tips and your 4x4 and entering all of the amazing competitions. The new prizes for 2014 will be listed shortly on the 4 Drive TV website. So don't miss your chance for next year. And remember, you've got to be in it to win it. Hi, I'm Warren from 4 Drive Bits. Welcome to the Taupo 1000 on Saturday morning. The race start this morning was 8 o'clock. There's a lot of vehicles on the track and even though we thought we'd done reasonably well, we were still number 91, which means there's an awful lot of cars in front. quite hectic when the race first started with people going everywhere and you know trying to make the most of the width of the track at the beginning. We seem to manage to get through some of the mud and slush with our diff locks and other things we use for winch challenges so we actually managed to get past a couple of cars before we got out of the farm. From the exit of the farm the track goes on to a single lane through forestry. This morning was quite wet and slippery and greasy. A few trucks came to grief there later in the day. First lap went quite well. Just following other cars around, it was a good pace, you know, something we were happy with. And we didn't have to think too much because we are just following somebody else. The morning started and we were number 30 on the grid this morning, which meant that we were in amongst a whole bunch of faster cars. Obviously they would had an issue on Saturday and starting down the grid a little bit further, so we spent half the first lap just giving way to faster cars that we weren't even racing with. And then it's just been a case of bringing it home. We've been passing a few guys that are trying to limp home and letting a few guys pass that we aren't racing. It's been a good day, all in all. The track's pretty damn rough. It's been a really good weekend. The track is excellent. There's some really fast sections where you can just go as fast as you dare. And other sections where it's just rough and you've really got to choose your line and decide where you want to go. It's been an absolutely fantastic weekend, well organised, and the pit area is huge, so there's plenty of room for everybody. It's been absolutely fantastic. It is a really good spectator event, especially this year. The venue's a bit different, and the track actually runs completely around the pit area in a gully, so the spectators are left and right sides at the top of the hill. It's been absolutely fantastic for spectators. The event's on every second year. The next one is 2015, so you should come and watch or enter, compete. It's the largest off-road racing event in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. I'm Warren from 4 Drive Bits. This is our race truck, and we're just waiting to get the final results for the weekend. We're hoping for a podium finish. We're pretty sure that we're third in class, possibly second. we just got to wait and see what the final results are.
see 78 FJ40 GU running gear all the way through it and a Corvette engine and trans. This weekend we bring Mickey Thompson's. Normally we run 35 inch Cymexes in the bush with the winch on, but Mickey Thompson's did a great job this weekend. It's been fantastic, had a couple of great days, felt great all weekend. It bounces around a lot, it's not really built for this sort of stuff, but we just come out and have a lot of fun. Lots and lots of time behind the wheels and really amazing tracks and bush and scenery and huge variety and lots of neat competitors. We spent a lot of time yesterday towing people out of the bush, but you know, that's all good for the sport. And today we just ran out of time with breaking the front end. Thanks, and it was a great weekend and well organised, so it's fun to be here. Well, thank you for tuning in for this whopping episode of Four Wheel Drive TV. Now remember, don't miss next week's episode. We've got all the amazing, exciting action from the Love Day 4x4 Adventure Park in South Australia. Well, I'm Simon Christie, signing off for the first episode of 2014. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to your company next week. <laughs>